Hello everybody, my name is Chad Barker. I am going to go through a little tutorial here on how to do a layout for a Master Vanity. Uh, so Master Vanity is a little bit more high-end than our, uh, our typical hall vanities and our guest baths and stuff like that. So we're going to do a little bit more fun stuff with it. Um, and obviously anything I'm doing here in this tutorial you can follow along with graph paper. Do not be uh, afraid to do that. I just do it on, com on the computer here because, uh, frankly, my uh, handwriting is terrible. So uh, this will look a lot better and it's going to be a lot cleaner for you. All right, so what I've done to get started here is I've drawn my walls, basically just two walls. I've got a 93-inch wall here and i got a 27-inch wall here. Now, important to do, uh, what I like to do, is mark out where your plumbing comes in. Now, if you see right here, I have the first plumbing is going to start at about 17 inches off the wall. That's from the right wall. And it's going to end at about 31 inches. Now the idea there is I want to make sure that my sink cabinet is going to be covering this plumbing. And the worst part that you could do is if you have a sink cabinet, and then let's just say that the end comes in like right here, and like the partition of the cabinet, you know, the side of it, uh, then you got to you got you got to mess because you got to like cut the cabinet apart. It's just it's it's a disaster. So just try to make sure you get the plumbing inside the sink cabinet, and you'll be good. Same thing over here, 65 inches from the from the right side, 65 inches, and then 79 inches. That's from the start to the finish. So I know my sink cabinets need to be somewhere in here. And that's pretty easy. And then I also have one other dimension that I noticed on site when we measured this guy is a 52 inch to the center of a heat vent. Now a lot of cabinets will have that, or master vanities will have that, where you have the heat vent coming out of the floor. And that's important to notice because you're gonna have to have like a little, you have to cut a little notch in your toe kick there. Now, having a little notch in that toe kick is, is fine. In fact, if you had a cabinet division, let's just say like the end of the cabinet, um, you know, it comes down, uh, you're going to want to make sure that that, he that heat vent is sort of centered or more or less inside of the cabinet itself so you don't have to cut into the partitions of the cabinet. Uh, it can be a mess at installation. It's not a big deal. I mean, you can, you, can, you can get around it by cutting around the cabinet, but I just recommend trying to get it inside of the sink cabinet if you could. Okay, so let's get started with some cabinet layout. I am going to first bring out a base filler, if I can find it. Base filler, base filler, there it is. And we are going to place this right here along this wall. So that's cabinet number 29. And the reason I do the fillers first is just because I like to get them out of the way. Uh, they're the least fun part of cabinet layout. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so looking at here, we have a finished in panel. Now, the idea here, the reason why we have to use a filler over here is because I got a wall. Cabinets are going to transition into the wall. One of our three rules on our website is fillers. Always have to use it as a transition piece. And the idea behind the filler is obviously if there's a problem, let's say that there, this wall is wavy, uh, or it actually, let's say that this wall is not a perfect 90 degree angle from this wall to here. Let's say this was a little bit more. Let's say it was coming out like this. Well, you put a frameless cabinet in here, and then you're going to have this weird gap beside your cabinet. Even though your cabinet's square on this back wall, you're going to have a weird gap up here. Now this filler takes care of all that, and a two inch wide filler is perfect. And this house that we're, we're putting these cabinets into is an old house, so its walls are out just a little bit. And you can say whatever you want about the contractors doing it. You might have the best contractor on the planet. Uh, it doesn't matter. Your walls are always going to be slightly off. Cabinets are perfect because we can CNC machine them you know, in a controlled environment. Uh, they're always going to be square, but your walls are always going to be just a little off because there's, you know, there's human hands touching them, even good human hands. So, uh, moving on, uh, finished end panel, like I said, right here, and I got my filler right there. Now it's going to start pulling some cabinets out here. This customer wants three drawer base cabinets right here, off to the side, and then right over here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull out a three drawer base cabinet if I can find it. There it is, and I'm going to make that guy real skinny. And leave him right there, and I'm going to pull out a sink cabinet, and I'm just going to copy and paste these guys. So I'm using a two-door sink cabinet, real simple. Looking at 3D, this is kind of where I'm at. So easy. So that's pretty much where we are, a little bit more of a top view right there. And what I want to do here, I have these cabinets, and these cabinets are basically, I can, I can vary the width of the sink cabinets, and that's going to be the, the most important part here. I can vary the width between 22 inches and 26 inches. That's standard cabinets. That's just been around for that. That standard has been around forever. Uh, so 22 inches to 26. Now 26 is typically used when you have a when you have like a, a sink cabinet right up against the wall. Like let's say I was going to put it like right here. I'd use a 26 inch wide sink cabinet and then place it up against the wall so that your elbow is not hitting the wall every time you're trying to turn the, the faucet on. 
right? You go two more, two inches wider. That's another inch um, away from the wall that your your sink's going to be the center line of your sink from the wall. So use that. The only time you do is 26 inches is there. Typically, the most common sink width possible here is 24. Now, 24 inch sink width is great. That's the most versatile. You can go down to a 22 inch if you really are tight for space. Personally, I think the 22 inch is a little small for the sink. It makes it harder to install the sink itself inside of the cabinet. So try to stay away from that if you can. Use 24 inches in all cases unless, like I said earlier, uh, you have that 26 inch sink and you want to space it a little bit farther away from the wall. Say your plumbing is coming out like right here. Then use the 26 inch. Okay. I'm staying with the 24 inch. That's fine. The depth of my sink cabinet is going to be dialed in at 22. And that's basically from the back wall here to the front of the cabinet case here. That's 22 inches. Vanity cabinets are always 22 inches in depth. You can go a little bit less, you can go a little bit more. You can go. Actually, I wouldn't go a little bit less because the sinks get a little crammed in there. Uh, you want to have enough room to attach your faucets. And a lot of the newer sinks are getting bigger and bigger. You've seen them. They get, you know, they're wider, they're more shallower, you know, they just have lots of stuff going on in them. So 22 inches from the back to the front of the sink cabinet. Now the height. Let's talk about the height a little bit. The height of a master vanity is typically what you want to do is stay at, at standard height. That's 34 and a half. You can go down to a 32 inch if you wanted to. Um, on a master vanity, you typically don't do that because, you know, you're not a child and, you know, you want to be able to, you know, not have to lean over so much. So master vanities and like your powder bathroom, uh, those are what I would consider adult areas. You know, that it's a nice bathroom. It's something that you're going to want to like look at. You're, you, you know, you're the homeowner. You paid for the house, you know, make a nice vanity for you, for yourself. Treat yourself a little bit. You only live once. So anyway, uh, 34 and a half uh, is what I'm going to use for this guy. Uh, he's also pretty tall. Like, like, uh, it's a friend of ours that we're building this, uh, this layout for. Okay, so, uh, you know, I'm six foot four. I use 34 and a half. I'm um, sorry, I'm being a dead horse here, so I'm moving on. Um, I'm going right here. It's going to make this 22 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this drawer stack right here as big as possible. And remember that the cabinet sides, the partitions, are... Let me see if I can color this. That nah, didn't look very good. These partitions right here are, you know, part of the structure of the cabinet. You can't really chew into these things if you get the plumbing in there. So I'm going to get the partition. I'm going to stay, you know, three quarters to an inch away from the plumbing. That way I have enough room to get the plumbing in there. The, you know, the plumber's not going to be all mad at me because if, I, if you make this too close and he can't get his uh, fittings in there, then he's going to be, you know, he's going to be flipping out on you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that as big as possible and make this drawer cabinet as big as possible on this side. Now we're going to move over here. I'm going to copy and paste. So this cabinet number 30, so this is a 12 inch wide, three drawer base cabinet. I'm going to try to keep it symmetrical. We all like symmetry. So I'm putting that one over here, making sure it's the same size. I'm just adjusting the depth of that filler so it lines up better with the face. Perfect. And I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this sink cabinet as well. So right now I have identical cabinets. I have one sink cabinet here, I have another sink cabinet here. I got another uh, three drawer base cabinet here. This is exactly the same as this guy over here. Do not worry about the fact that you have a finished end panel that's three quarters of an inch wide and then your filler that's two inches. The eye is not drawn to that. Symmetry is nice. Uh, but it's not always necessary. Uh, it looks fine if you're doing it like just like this. Oh, I need to adjust that depth. Sorry. All right, that's pretty much it. Now in the middle, uh, you can do whatever you want. Technically, you could do a four drawer stack right here. I got a big open space, so you figure out what you want to do. I think in this case, I'm trying to think what would be the best here. Let's do something fun here. I'm going to put in a two drawer, one door, two drawer. Uh, no, I don't think I like that. Maybe a four drawer? I wish I could talk to you guys because I, I don't know. All right, let's do a four drawer in the middle. You can do anything you want. Do a three drawer, a four drawer, whatever you want. I think a little bit more, maybe toothbrushes and stuff like that. Maybe a little bit more access there. Yeah, I need to adjust the depth. Oh, that's going to look weird. Now you can step these in and out. You are going to lose a little bit of space because you have to use finished end panels. Uh, if let's say I wanted to step this back, I'd have to put finished in panels. You're going to lose an inch and a half on each side uh, to make it look correct. Okay. In this case, we're just going to make it like this. Let's see if I can give you a better view. There's kind of a top view. Here's a real generic view. I'll do some 3D views later. Cool. 
So that's pretty much it. Um, his and hers uh, master vanity. Real simple. Now the idea behind doing like a shaker vanity like this, uh, a lot of people look at it like, oh, that might look boring. Well, the idea here is that everything's flush. Um, it's all like the lines are just perfect. So now you can get your countertop on there, and it just looks presentable. You know, if you try to get too ornate, you try to put like you know dolphin heads, like wood carvings and stuff on the front of the doors, it just starts to look tacky after a while. So uh, one thing that we've that we've seen a lot of in the past is uh, people. Uh, really enjoy and the most popular cabinets are always going to be the ones that are most streamlined simple uh, just you know clean lines you know properly done architecturally uh, beautiful you know the same with the, same with the house you know it's the same with everything with the iPhone you know, look at look at how successful simple products are so that's what we're doing on this one we're just gonna keep it simple shaker painted white real easy all right so that's pretty much it um, the bonus round here let me do a 3d drawing for you guys are gonna want to see that all right, here we go Okay, well, I don't know why it keeps doing that. I had a little thing here. Hmm, odd. Uh, okay, so anyway, you can get the idea here. Uh, we have a finished end panel here. We have a filler here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, five cabinets. So really, uh, we're about seven pieces to create this master vanity. Uh, now keep in mind, too, you do need to put a toe skin on the bottom down here. Now that one single toe skin is available in our millwork category on our website. Go to the top of our website and click on millwork. And then you'll see uh, like baseboards and uh, toe skins. Now the idea behind a toe skin is the fact that if you look really closely, you can see little seams right here between the cabinets. Okay, you're also going to see the plywood and stuff like that. So the toe skin is just a long strip of painted material that matches up with the doors. You apply that to the face there, and it looks like it was built as one single cabinet. So that's how you do it. Whenever you go to like a you know a Street of Dreams, I'm not, I don't know what's in your local area, but uh, whenever you go to like a really nice, you know, high-end home show, you know, that's 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 what they have. They make it look like one single cabinet. They don't actually build a single cabinet like this. It's not possible. Um, so anyway, this is you know, this is a very high-end vanity, um, and that's just kind of a trick of the trade. So uh, anyway, so that's pretty much it there. Uh, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. I'm going to continue this video because I want to put a, a kind of a cool uh, upper cabinet right there. Maybe something. Maybe something a little, uh, maybe something on the upper part of it. All right, so let's get started here. So you can quit the video if you don't want a little upper cabinet here. But uh, the customer here wants a little upper cabinet, and they want it to stick out pretty good. So I don't, I don't think that's going to look. Let's just do a little bit of uh, playing around here. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a cabinet right here in the middle. Now we don't really have to worry too much about the center line of the sink and being too close to this because it's going to be a really short or shallow depth cabinet. And what I would, what I have here, we have a 96 inch tall ceiling. I'm checking the measurements. No, it's actually 97 inches. So I'm going to change the height here to 97. So now when we look at it, we're going to be more accurate. So there's 97. That's our dimension for the top of the ceiling. And they're probably going to want to run this cabinet all the way up to the ceiling. Now you don't have to. I mean, technically you could put this thing down to 90. Actually, I think 90 is going to look better. To be completely. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just changing the, the soffit height or the top of the cabinet being locked into that. So uh, when you're doing a countertop drop cabinet, which is what this is, this is cabinet number 36. It's a, basically just a glass cabinet. I'm going to put light or uh, grids on it. I think it looks better. Uh, maybe even put some beveled glass in it and be kind of cool looking. Uh, some lighting on the interior. Um, uh, look at right here. We have nine and a half inches, so I'm just going to increase that by... eight and leave an inch and a half there Now the idea is that you have to make sure you know what your countertop thickness is now inch and a half is probably that's probably too much so let's just add on I wanted to make the height of that 50 and a quarter that way we have let's just say we're using slab granite uh, inch and a quarter is about what the thickness of that would be so that's just about dead on I'm gonna change the hinge side on this because I like things that are right side hinged. It doesn't matter. It's your own personal preference. So that's pretty much where we are right there. Now, looking at this thing in 3D, that gives them a 14-inch depth countertop drop cabinet. Now, we'd have to imagine. I'll, I'll draw in the countertops for you here in a minute. Um, and then we can also put some crown molding up on top. I think that looks a little too short. Yeah, it does. Okay, so there we go. Um, and then what I'm going to do is... So I just increased the height of this guy, uh, so it's a little bit taller. 
Now he's going to have mirrors going on here, so that's going to take up the the wall space you're going to see in the 3D views. But the idea is now run to to run the uh, crown molding up to the ceiling, and kind of give you uh, some more shelves in there. So this one right here is going to be it's going to have a couple more shelves. You kind of get the idea. What's the height there? We automatically add shelves in as the cabinets get taller, just so you know. Okay, so that's good. Just make sure on this one uh, that you use a finished end panel. So I am going to add a couple of finished end panels in because obviously the sides are exposed in this. Uh, so what I want to do here is just make sure that we got the sides of the cabinet covered. Alright, perfect. Uh, so, looking at it in kind of a generic 3D, that's kind of what we're looking at. So, we got our sinks here, our sinks here. Personally, I don't really like this too much because I still think that it's kind of impeding on the sink a little bit. It'll probably be fine uh, the way it's set up right here, but I, I still think that's a little close. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to change this over to 26, like we said before. Remember, we talked about the elbows. <coughs> There we go. So this guy just got changed to 26 inches. It just kind of squeezed out a little bit of space of your storage. There we go. Gives him just a little bit more. And I'm also going to shrink this guy down to a 16.25 to keep it the same as the ones, uh, the cabinet below it. So that might work out. Maybe like a nice mirror frame or something like that would probably make it look better too. Okay, so that's good. So I'm gonna put some. Uh, I'm gonna put these things into 3D, and then we'll uh, we'll take a look at this. There we go. So, all right. So basically, what I did was uh, I, I paused the video for a second, and then I went through and I added the crown molding, and I added the toe skin, and then I did this cool little mirror frame here. So basically, what I did was I just took some baseboard, and then I just uh, if I ordered say I think probably four long lengths of baseboard. Uh, they come in 90 inch lengths. It's just a solid wood base uh, base molding. And then what I would do is I, if I was on site I would actually cut these and kind of frame out the mirror a little bit to kind of um, bring some balance to each side. I don't, I don't know the best way of saying it but uh, with, with it just showing the wall it looked, looked like garbage. So, And I put a piece of mirror in between it to kind of show you obviously there's nothing to reflect off of um, so you can't really get too much of an idea there but this is the ultimate goal here is to make something that looks more or less like this. Uh, technically, you could run these up to the ceiling if you wanted to and then have your crown molding die off into the face of that. Uh, I just put this together in literally 30 seconds, so um, that's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of it. Um, again, to uh, kind of recap here, remember we have this countertop drop cabinet that's in the wall cabinet area underneath the exposed interior cabinets. I got two end panels, one on each side. So there's just one cabinet there, finished in, finished in. I got a filler between the cabinet run and the wall. I got a base three drawer cabinet, a two door sink cabinet, a four drawer base cabinet, a two door sink cabinet, another three drawer base cabinet, and then a finished in panel to cover up those uh, those construction holes on the on the side of the cabinets. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to give us a call or send us an email, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sorry, this video took 18 minutes. Um, I guess that's just kind of what happens. Thanks again. Have a great day.